Hi there, I'm Dr. Chris. This is my first video in a series on sinusoids laying the groundwork for a future discussion on seismic waves. We're first going to cover the characteristics of a simple, single-frequency sinusoid, including the peak, the trough, zero crossings, amplitudes, periods and frequencies, and the phase. Here we go. The waves I'm going to be talking about are analogous to sound waves that pass through the air during simple conversations. These waves will have varying amplitude and frequency range. More simply, we can think of ocean waves and tidal effects where natural sinusoids can be seen in the motion of water. For now, I'll be using my yo-yo to illustrate a simple sinusoid. A rotating yo-yo has more or less consistent circular motion, producing a sinusoid with several properties. When the yo-yo hits the top of its rotation, we call this the peak. When the yo-yo hits the bottom of the rotation, we call this the trough. When the yo-yo crosses the middle, we call this the zero crossing. We are going to shift from a spinning yo-yo to a spinning wheel to help visualize sinusoidal motion. Focusing on a single point on the wheel, we see uniform circular motion. A second point, which only tracks the vertical, shows the sinusoid motion. The sinusoid motion is fast in the middle, while slow at the top and bottom. If we consider our sinusoid in time, we end up with a graph like this, with positive peaks in, strangely enough, the positive side, and troughs in the negative. And of course, the zero crossing when the amplitude of the wave is zero. These graphs could also be in distance as well, but we'll only be interested in time for this video. Further, our sinusoid can be completely defined by three properties. The amplitude, which is the vertical measure of the wave, frequency, in this case cycles per second, or the period, and the phase, which is defined as a shift at zero time. Coming back to our spinning wheel, we see that one complete rotation creates one cycle of the sinusoid. In this case, every second cycle is shown in blue. The highlights in yellow reveal one complete cycle with a positive peak and a negative trough. The wave is symmetrical about the axis. Let us consider the phase of a wave. In this case, the wave is frozen at time zero. The phase angle is zero at time zero. However, if we apply a 45 degree phase lag, we see that the wave is effectively time shifted, specifically delayed by one eighth of its original period. If, however, we apply a 45 degree phase lead, we see that the wave is positively time shifted by one eighth of its original period. Here I have juxtaposed the phase lag on top with the phase lead on the bottom so you can observe how different phase shiftings affect a single frequency wave. Looking at another situation, we apply a 90 degree phase lag producing a quarter period time delay. This is essentially equal to a phase lead of 270 degrees with three quarter period time shift. Next, we apply a 180 degree phase lag which results in a corresponding half period time delay. This is equal to applying a 180 degree phase lead for a half period time shift. As you can see, the original wave is completely inverted. Now a 270 degree phase lag has a corresponding three quarter period time delay, or a 90 degree phase lead with a quarter period time shift. And finally, a 360 degree phase lag is equal to a 360 degree phase lead each with a time shift of one period. 
As you can see, we cannot distinguish between the original zero phase and the phase shifted waveforms. This also shows that 360 degree phase change or one full cycle will not change a signal. To recap, a wave can be defined completely by three characteristics. Its amplitude, which is defined from the zero crossing to the peak, or the zero crossing to the trough. Its wavelength, equivalent to one full cycle of the wave, or its frequency, which is cycles per second. And the last property, its phase, is defined from a shift from zero time. Waves will get a little more complicated over the next few videos, so stay tuned. I've uploaded the clips of my wave animations if you want to use them for your teaching or demonstration purposes. Just give me credit. If you like my videos, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and even better, share my videos to your networks. Until next time, I'm Dr. Chris, and keep rocking.